How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to take a look at a portable power station and go over the limits of all the input ports. Many times you might shy away from putting too much current in or pulling too much out because it actually breaks the device. I got it charged up to 100%. Let me unplug it. So now we're gonna dump this electricity into my car. Tesla mobile connector, plug it into here, turn on the AC. Don't do this at home. I'm using a neutral to ground bond plug that I hacked myself. Plug it in there, plug in the mobile charger, and I'm gonna plug it into my car. Let it ramp up to about 1400 watts and see how much usable energy will come out of these AC ports. 2.038 kilowatt hours. In my app, it says it added six miles. So now let's see how much energy it takes to charge this thing back up to 100%. 132 watts max, turn on the DC output. I plugged in the lights that I'm using right now. If I add in the lowest speed, 120 watts, the next setting is gonna go over 150. Oh, I turned it off. Over current, it shows the error 60. So let's see how long it takes to reset. Will it reset? If I turn it back on, plug in my dryer. Let's do that again. We can go over current for a short time. Let's do that. Oh, very short time. So from that, we know this is 10 amp maximum. It's a resettable fuse. Just make sure you don't go over wattage afterwards and it will turn back on. Next, I have this massage chair that will connect to the DC5521 ports. Each one of these is 60 watt maximum. So let's turn it on, plug it in, turn it on. And my massager only does 26 watts. So within the limits of this port, turn it on to the other one. Same thing, we can turn off this entire set just by pushing this button. Charging this battery with the battery charger. Start, enter. And we are pulling 2.2 amps, output 63 watts. So we pretty much maxed out the output of this port. Each pair of these USB ports can do up to 24 watts. This one up here, after it negotiates the protocol, it pulls 12 watts. Let me unplug that and plug this one in. It's drawing 15, 16 watts. So if you add them together, it's 28 watts. Both of these in to the same grouping. So it'll go over 24 watts. But what happens is it drops down to zero and the most it'll do now is 21 watts. I have a power bank that's 75% full. It can draw up to 60 watts and it ramps up from 30 watts, 59 watts. The USB tester also reads 61.1 watts, so pretty close. Let's try this other port. It also ramps up to 59 watts and it says 60.7 over here. Plugging the laptop here and also the power bank here. These are supposed to be individually 100 watts for a total of 200 watts. And we see here it adds up to 160. Space heating is probably not a good idea with a power station because it uses so much electricity. If you use a heater, you might only be able to turn it on for maybe an hour or two. But we're going to plug it in just to draw a lot of power out of this thing. And now we're doing 1000 watts on another one here. Third setting, it's only going over by 20 watts. So I expect this to keep on going until it drains fully. Nice and warm over here. And by its own calculation, it can go for 52 minutes. Hair dryers, you probably only use it for like 10 minutes or so at a time, but using just a heater, it can last for two hours. I'm actually interested in going over the wattage. So we have a different heater here. Setting one. 2275. It's not too strict about this. It can go over a little bit for a short time. Second heating setting. So now it's over. And if I go really over, 25, 2700 watts. If you go over current, the voltage drops on this thing. We'll measure the voltage with this guy. So we see 120 volts. So let's turn this thing on. At 2200 watts, it's staying 120 volts. But if I crank it up, this should be over wattage now. 2600 watts, voltage is still staying good, but it's probably gonna say, hey, that's too much wattage. It's gonna reduce it in a bit. Okay, it's cutting it now. The voltage drooped 
to 92. This behavior is something you cannot set. For resistive loads like hair dryers or heaters, it doesn't really matter too much. It's just gonna slow down a little bit, not output as much heat. But sometimes for like computers, it might matter a little bit if the voltage drops below 100 volts. Some power banks allow you to choose to have this option so you can keep on pushing out as much wattage as possible. Other ones, if you go over, it'll just cut out the output. So for this Eager Tech, this is something you cannot choose. It's just gonna droop the voltage. When you have no power at all and you wanna cook some food, this is something you would want to connect to your power bank. You microwave for a few minutes and your meal is ready. I'm gonna put in some water. 60 seconds, see what happens. Usually I can hear that it's struggling if it doesn't give out enough wattage, but it's pulling 1970 watts doing it just fine the voltage is staying near 120 volts many times when a power bank is less than 2000 watts it has a hard time driving a microwave almost one minute microwaving here there we go yeah it's hot if you look on the left it's a very plain flat panel with vent holes right here if you turn it around to the other side it looks exactly the same on the back there's the ac input and the solar or car input there's two xt60 connectors each one can do up to 400 watts on the bottom it's plain rubber feet and that's it on the top there's a 15 watt wireless charger and if we plug in the AC input, I can only get it up to 1600 watts. I've got 220 watts of solar coming in here. Let's plug it in. And yes, input 175 watts. Keep in mind, there's no MPPT controller here. So it's not as efficient as it should be. The solar input can go from 11 to 46 volts, 12 amp maximum, and it can go up to 400 watts each. I have a solar panel that is 420 watts, 44.3 volts maximum. So it's just under the 46 volts. The wattage could slightly go over the 400 watts maximum if I get really, really strong full sun. So let's plug this in and see what happens. 420 watts. That's what it looks like in my yard. Solar's coming in here. Converter cable. Double check the polarity. 40.3 volts out. Plugging it in. 330 watts in. I'm going to adjust it a little bit. Okay, that should be good. Unfortunately, the high as it goes is 321 watts. Actually have the full sun on it. Can't get it any higher. You can unplug the charging and it'll show how much output and then just replug it back in and it'll switch back. If the output is more than the input, it'll show the output. If I unplug it, then it says input is 261. So overall, it survived all my tests. Nothing is broken about it. When I first looked at this device, it looks kind of boxy, but after testing it, I feel like they didn't lie on the capacity. It can handle the 2200 watts just fine. If you go over current in some of these devices, it shuts down. It doesn't pop a fuse that you cannot easily replace and it can recover on its own. So overall, I feel like this is a pretty reliable device. If you guys are interested in getting one of these for yourself, check out my Amazon affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time.